Liberating Life, Woman's Revolution, by Abdullah Ohalan. Chapter 11 Killing the Dominant Male, Instituting the Third Major Sexual Rupture Against the Dominant Male Although male dominance is well institutionalized, men too are enslaved. The system is in fact reproducing itself in the individual male and female and their relationship. Therefore, if we want to defeat the system, we need a radical, new approach towards woman, man, and their relationship. History, in a sense, is the history of the dominant male who gained power with the rise of class society. The ruling class character is formed concurrent with the dominant male character. Again, rule is validated through mythological lies and divine punishment. Beneath these masks lies the reality of bare force and coarse exploitation. In the name of honor, man seized the position and rights of woman in the most insidious, traitorous, and despotic manner. The fact that, throughout history, woman was left bereft of her identity and character, the eternal captive, at the hands of man, has caused considerably more damage than class division has. The captivity of woman is a measure of society's general enslavement and decline, it is also a measure of its lies, theft, and tyranny. The dominant male character of society has to date not even allowed for scientific analysis of the phenomenon of woman. The fundamental question is why man is so jealous, dominant, and villainous where woman is concerned, why he continues to play the rapist. Undoubtedly rape and domination are phenomena related to social exploitation, they reflect society's rape by hierarchy patriarchy and power. If we look a little deeper, we will see that these acts also express a betrayal of life. Woman's multifaceted devotion to life may clarify man's societal sexist stand societal sexism means the loss of wealth of life under the blinding and exhausting influence of sexism and the consequent rise of anger, rape, and a dominating stance. This is why it is important to place on the agenda the problem of man, which is far more serious than the issue of woman. It is probably more difficult to analyze the concepts of domination and power, concepts related to man. It is not woman but man that is unwilling to transform. He fears that abandoning the role of the dominant male figure would leave him in the position of the monarch who has lost his state. He should be made aware that this most hollow form of domination leaves him bereft of freedom as well and, even worse it forecloses reform. In order to lead a meaningful life, we need to define woman and her role in societal life. This should not be a statement about her biological attributes and social status but an analysis of the all-important concept of woman as a being. If we can define woman, it may be possible to define man. Using man as point of departure when defining woman or life will render invalid interpretations because woman's natural existence is more central than man's. Woman's status is demeaned and made out to be insignificant by the male dominant society but this should not prevent us from forming a valid understanding of her reality. Thus, it is clear that woman's physique is not deficient or inferior, to the contrary the female body is more central than that of man. This is the root of man's extreme and meaningless jealousy. The natural consequence of their differing physiques is that woman's emotional intelligence is much stronger than man's is. Emotional intelligence is connected to life, it is the intelligence that governs empathy and sympathy. Even when woman's analytic intelligence develops, her emotional intelligence gives her the talent to live a balanced life, to be devoted to life, not to be destructive. As can be seen even from this short argumentation, man is a system. The male has become a state and turned this into the dominant culture. Class and sexual oppression develop together, Masculinity has generated ruling gender, ruling class, and ruling state. When man is analyzed in this context, it is clear that masculinity must be killed. Indeed, to kill the dominant man is the fundamental principle of socialism. This is what killing power means, to kill the one-sided domination, the inequality, and intolerance. Moreover, it is to kill fascism, dictatorship, and despotism. We should broaden this concept to include all these aspects. Liberating life is impossible without a radical women's revolution which would change man's mentality and life. If we are unable to make peace between man and life and life and woman, happiness is but a vain hope. 
Gender revolution is not just about woman. It is about the 5,000 years old civilization of class society which has left man worse off than woman. Thus, this gender revolution would simultaneously mean man's liberation. I have often written about total divorce, i.e. the ability to divorce from the 5,000 years old culture of male domination. The female and male gender identities that we know today are constructs that were formed much later than the biological female and male. Woman has been exploited for thousands of years according to this constructed identity, never acknowledged for her labor. Man has to overcome always seeing woman as wife, sister, or lover, stereotypes forged by tradition and modernity. Claiming that we first have to address the question of state then the question of family is not sound. No serious social problem can be understood if addressed in isolation. A far more effective method is to look at everything within the totality to render meaning to each question within its relationship to the other. This method also holds when we try to resolve problems. Analyzing the social mentality without analyzing the state, analyzing the state without analyzing the family and analyzing the woman without analyzing the man would render insufficient results. We need to analyze these social phenomena as an integrated whole, if not, the solutions we arrive at will be inadequate. The solutions for all social problems in the Middle East should have woman's position as focus. The fundamental objective for the period ahead of us must be to realize the third major sexual rupture, this time against the male. Without gender equality no demand for freedom and equality can be meaningful. In fact, freedom and equality cannot be realized without the achievement of gender equality. The most permanent and comprehensive component of democratization is woman's freedom. The societal system is most vulnerable because of the unresolved question of woman, woman who was first turned into property and who today is a commodity, completely body and soul. The role the working class have once played, must now be taken over by the sisterhood of women. So, before we can analyze class, we must be able to analyze the sisterhood of women, this will enable us to form a much clearer understanding of the issues of class and nationality. Woman's true freedom is only possible if the enslaving emotions, needs and desires of husband, father, lover, brother, friend, and son can all be removed. The deepest love constitutes the most dangerous bonds of ownership. We will not be able to discern the characteristics of a free woman if we cannot conduct a stringent critique of the thought, religious, and art patterns concerning woman generated by the male-dominated world. Woman's freedom cannot just be assumed once a society has obtained general freedom and equality. A separate and distinct organization is essential and woman's freedom should be of a magnitude equal to its definition as a phenomenon. Of course a general democratization movement may also uncover opportunities for women. But it will not bring democracy on its own. Women need to determine their own democratic aim, and institute the organization and effort to realize it. To achieve this, a special definition of freedom is essential in order for women to break free from the slavery ingrained in her.